So my name is Omar Noor. I'm a dermatologist in New York City. Uh, and I am the proud new owner of a, a Tesla Model S Plaid. Um, this is, it's my first Tesla, though my younger brother has a Model S Ludacris Plus, and he's the one that got me on the bandwagon. Um, after driving his car once, I was like, oh man, this thing is amazing. And I'm just, I am so lucky to have one. So, uh, no, I'm excited to be here. Um, if anybody has any questions, shoot them over and, uh, I'll kind of show you guys what I know. I'm like I said, I'm kind of like a Tesla noob. So, uh, be kind and <laughs> don't ask me too hard questions. Uh, but yeah, here it is. Awesome. Yeah. So if, if you want to start with a, a walkthrough of the exterior, just showing us around the vehicle. Um, and then there's a question while, while you're going through this is, do you have a, uh, the model S key that looks like the model S? Yes. Um, I have it maybe in my pocket. Good. This is the key that it came with or the key pop. It came with two of these. Um, it also came with two key cards and obviously the phone access. Okay, perfect. I, I did. I was gonna say. I thought I heard that it, it also you you have the uh, the key card access, which is a pretty nice feature now. Yeah. Obviously, you see if you come close enough to the car with your phone, the door handles and the windows open up for you. Um, I have the twenty one inch arachnoid wheels. Uh, you can see here that I'm actually kind of bummed about the um, brake calipers are black instead of the traditional red. Um, I'm debating whether or not to uh, to convert them to red, but we'll see. Uh, I, I don't have the one of the first 25, so therefore I have your your basic plaid. But I mean, I, I really, I love the plaid. Um, being a Tesla noob, I never really understood the 90D, 100D. I was like, what are, dual motor? I was like, what are these cars? So I feel like with the plaid, you kind of know exactly what's going on. Um, you see they, they blacked out or they color matched, I guess, this back here. Um, whereas on the previous Teslas, they're chrome and then the, License plate is also color matched. Um, I think the back bumper, you see the diffuser here at the bottom. This is really what gives it its ability for its whole like HVAC system to stay at such a top speed, uh, at such a high speed, keep the horsepower. And then also, also allows you to keep running the car over and over again at that higher horsepower without it losing any type of kind of oomph. Um, do you have any plans That's, to get a uh, one of those uh, a, a cor join join the corny license plate club? I, I don't I I don't know if I'm witty enough to join the corny license plate club, but um I about the license plate though it does come with this giant kind of plastic thing on the front, mm -hmm. which it seems like a lot of people are not a fan of. I think it's it's glued to the front to some extent. Um, I'm I'm actually tomorrow I'm bringing it to get it wrapped. Um, at this place in New Rochelle, I actually, I got the name from someone else from the uh, Tesla Motor Club for New York City, uh, enthusiasts. Um, and uh, it's, I'm gonna do matte black, I think. And I'm gonna turn the, so they kept the Tesla Chrome here, which a lot of people have found to be kind of unique because they blacked out everything else. All the handles are no longer Chrome. And I kind of like the idea of making them red. So, mm -hmm. and then we'll see if he can take that license plate cover off also. Um, I know, I feel like I'm like, I, when I walked in and I saw the car, I was like, oh my God, this car is beautiful. But then I was like, oh, do I really want to get it wrapped? But I'm like, yeah, I think it'll look better. <laughs> you could do, um, if, uh, if, if you wanted to, you could do a stealth wrap, which will protect the yeah. paint. And then, yep, yep. So it's, uh, um, on, as far as the, the outside, did, did you notice if the, I don't know if this counts as exterior or interior, but is the frunk any different than the, uh, the previous versions? Uh, you know, I can show you. So why don't I jump in the car and open the front? Um, they taught me how to open and close it because it's still a uh, it's still a manual front. So we'll go through the interior kind of display and the UI, which is kind of amazing. But essentially, you go through the settings, open the front here. And you can see here, pretty classic. Oh my, um, you should be able to front with your key fob. Can you do that? Uh, good question. No, I think it's a, a double tap anything. on the front of it, I believe. I thought so, but when, once right. it's so, open, yeah. Once it's closed, closed, closed. Uh, closed. When it's closed, I don't, this doesn't feel like it um, taps, but I will. 
I can try. Nope. Nope. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so nope. uh, the trunk is, is relative, or the frunk is, is pretty much the, the same as usual. Nothing, nothing, uh, no, no turbochargers or superchargers under there. No, yeah, there's not, yeah, there's <laughs> nothing there. All right, so let's jump in the car. All right, so I got the wood trim, obviously, since getting the car early, um, the wood trim, I feel like was a must. Seems like most people are waiting on the carbon fiber trim. I originally, my original order had carbon fiber and I switched to wood almost immediately after the wood was available because I, I actually preferred the wood and I'm really happy with the kind of the color of it and the trim of it. Um, I also, yeah, close this door. I also love the inner kind of mesh. I don't know what this is. This is kind of like a tweed. Um, which is really nice. Oh, so it's not the Alcantara. That's a different material they're using. So the Alcantara, I think, is on the interior visors, but this is kind of like a tweed, and then this is Alcantara. Oh wow! So, um, like I was, I was telling Steve earlier, my favorite thing of this car is the UI. The UI, and I think you guys are connected to the car now. Um, the UI, it functions so quickly that, I mean, anything you want to do, it's like, I do a million things at work at the same time, and I'm sure everyone else does also. And the fact that there's zero lag time, really, it just makes my life so much better. Um, so yeah, so this is kind of the UI, everything runs through the settings menu, right? So you can open the frunk, the trunk, the charging port. The glove box, which is, I think, a new feature of opening it through the settings menu, um, opens up there. You can change your mirrors. You can change the height or the direction of your mirrors. You can fold your mirrors, obviously. Um, but I guess the biggest thing is going to be the yoke. So as the yoke goes, initially, I was a little thrown off when I first, um, when I first started using it. But I've only driven the car really two, three times um, and around 200 miles. And I am 100% on board with the Oak. Um, it is so comfortable. It makes the car feel smaller, like where it, it allows me to have more space in the more car. More nimble. So okay. it allows my cockpit. You know, yeah, it just like allows the cockpit to feel bigger, right? Like the the old um, steering wheel, it just it it does. You don't realize like how much space that actually takes up. Um, I will say the buttons I have to get used to, and the lack of a stock for a blinker. I mean, I find myself constantly going here, so that's going to take a little while. But I've gotten I've gotten used to hitting these buttons. And these buttons, you guys can't feel it obviously, but the haptic response of the buttons is is incredible. Um, you click the, I think this is a lot of this is uh, in the uh, Model 3 and Model Y, but the scroll wheel to put in your uh, full self-driving, which I have. Um, I do find myself sometimes slipping and hitting the windshield button, <laughs> the windshield wiper button by mistake. Uh, I'm sure that's going to take a little getting used to. Oh, and um, one time there was a little schmutz on my steering wheel, so I went to wipe it and I honked at somebody. So... <laughs> You know, there's there's, there's going to be things like that that are going to pop up. Um, but overall, I've been incredibly happy with the yoke and kind of maneuvering it and utilizing it. Now, I, I think one thing I, I saw before is there a physical? Uh, can you can you press where it says Tesla and act as a horn, or do you have to? Oh, so there's no no response from that. No. Okay. No. Nope. So you, you have you to have press to the, the, the horn button. Okay. Gotcha. gotcha. I guess so. You don't break your nose, or this breaks your nose. I don't know. We'll see. Um, um, one of our members, John, was at the uh, at, at the Plaid event about what was it a week ago or two weeks? I, I, it feels it feels like it was just yesterday, but um, but he he was taught one of his, his the things his biggest takeaway about the, uh, the, the the refresh was the air vent regarding the screen setup. I think you you said you want to talk a little bit about that. Yes, I completely agree. That's another portion of that I absolutely love. It just it just makes it feel like a spaceship. So this air vent, so the air vents, you can kind of see up here. So they're hidden in the dashboard and around the car. And you can control the direction or the laminar flow. I don't know if you guys can get a good view of this. But just by moving your finger around, and then you can spread the flow so that it doesn't hit you in the face. 
which I think is so cool. Um, and then on top of that, obviously, what's new are these um, uh, mesh seats or uh, perforated seats. So the perforated seats um, allow for cooled seats, which are incredible, and they work really, really quickly. And obviously, in these super hot days, that has been uh, like already kicked in, and it's already cool. I mean, it's fantastic. So I believe the, the I think it's the Ford F one fifty. I think it's the Ford F one fifty. You could do cooled seats and heated seats at the same time. Can you do that in the in the, in the Model S? Uh, that's a good question. I don't I, know why anyone would want that. It doesn't make <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But just is, it, is that an option if you'd like? It is not because you okay. switch between heat this way. So unfortunately, you cannot. This is the heated um, windshield, and the um, obviously the defogger. Gotcha. Um, let me see. So I think yeah, you mentioned the seats are AC, they're heated as well. Um, do you notice if they're any different than, I think you said your brother has a Model S. Do you think they're any more oh, comfortable, yeah. any more? Uh, I, I feel they're more comfortable. I haven't driven in his Model S a ton, but from everything that I've read for people that have had Model S's prior to getting a Plaid, um, they feel that the seat is much more comfortable. It contours to your body much better. Um, and then obviously the there's more room in the back seats so i can you know, actually move do they move yeah if you want to head to the back yeah see i'm like carrying around bags so do you know do you know if they uh move the seats down how do they end up making more headroom back there i actually have no idea i'm assuming some of it probably has to do with the yoke um, because the car is still the same length, but the, it is a little bit wider. So let's see what we got here. No device connected. Oh yeah. So here's like your classic, you know, choose whatever you want to watch in the back here. I haven't actually clicked any of this yet. So I think it needs to get like logged in and everything. Um, but again, you know, everything comes for me, comes back to how like responsive it is and how quickly things can move. And I, I love the fact that it's so responsive. Um, there are heated seats in the back. The people in the back do have their own kind of- Mini version uh, of what's line. up there, yeah. Yeah, so you can see here. But I think they're, even though they're perforated, they only have heated seats in the back. Gotcha. So same, same design. But and then they can seat. control their own AC, yeah. And then they have the same AC laminar flow. That is so amazing how they built that. They that can adjust. That. <laughs> so amazing. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and you know, I mean, if you're looking here, you don't see any vents, right. right? I mean, it's, and then the roof is completely glass. I mean, it's really comfortable back here. And I mean, granted, I'm not a very tall person, but um, yeah, I do find it to be very comfortable. So I think there's one more question I have for you on the uh, on the interior, and then we'll move over to some fireside uh, chat questions, yeah. and then the Q and A after. So I'm a big audio guy. I love speakers. I love high quality, high fidelity audio. Uh, I think they, they're finally bringing over title uh, to streaming service to to Teslas. I don't know why it's taken so long. They but coming out soon. How, now here's the big question for you: How is the sound system on here? Because from what we've heard, it is the the, the best of the best. Yeah, I mean, from my very amateur appreciation of the sound the sound has been fantastic oh one other thing i didn't mention this thing is so quiet i mean it is incredible so i was driving down new jersey turnpike um today on the truck lane next to a 911 turbo and which i went very quickly by i will not say how fast <laughs> i was going but it was so easy we were going like what 60 and then we went a lot faster and it was so simple but the interesting part was you know, obviously my car makes no noise. I got trucks all around me and I'm not hearing anything. Wow. And you you just feel like you're just floating the way that the car moves. I mean, it's so agile and it's so quiet. And I think every window has this double pane glass. And I don't even think that they've instituted their, um, their uh, like technology that allows for like sound dampening. Mm -hmm. But this glass, you, you can't hear anything outside of the car. It's incredible. <laughs> Yeah, from, from what I know, they took a, a, a page out of 
uh, from what Bose did, which is eat like an active noise cancellation. So it it, uh, it, it, it really helps with uh, with any road noise, any wind noise, anything like that at all. Yeah, no, it's, it's really, it's incredibly well built. There's like, I mean, granted, I haven't heard, I mean, I haven't driven that much. No, no creaks, no nothing, no wind noise. I mean, it's, it's rock solid. Awesome. Awesome. So, all right, I'll move us on to the, uh, to the fireside chat. So the, the big question I have for you is why, why, why the model S plaid? What made you get it? <laughs> so it's a good question. I mean, for me, number one, it was timing. Oh, right? sorry, so, uh, Omar, if you want to flip the camera around so we can see you. Oh yeah, sorry. Let's see. So for me, it was timing, right? So I, my, we have two kids. My wife drives a full-size Range Rover um, with the car seats and the whole deal. And my small BMW convertible was nearing 100,000 miles. So it was getting about time to switch. And I drive a lot. Like I drive probably around maybe 20,000 miles a year. So um, I, uh, I figured I wanted the full self-driving. It's a Tesla. I drive a lot. Let me make my life easier. And then the plaid came out and I was like, mm, is it worth it to splurge? And I'm like, uh, yes, it is. And I'll tell you, yes, this car is expensive. There's no question, hands down. But I truly believe it is it is a bargain at the price that you're getting it. Once you drive it, you're just like, holy crap. Like, how could this car be 140 grand? Or 130, I guess, without the full self-driving. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, that kind of leads in, into my next question, but have you, um, I, I, I don't know if you said this before, you, your brother has, has a Model S, but have you had a Tesla before this one or an electric vehicle before this? So nope, this first, is the first. First one. Wow. Yep. Good, it's a good, good, good first electric car to get into, <laughs> right? <laughs> I love how other people that have planned, they're like, oh, this is like my seventh Tesla. And I, was like, I don't know what a Tesla is. Um, but man, I, I mean, I'm hooked for life, for sure. Awesome. Did, did you have any fears getting into an electric car or was, or was it pretty much the car was so compelling? It, it was it was hard to, to find a reason not yeah. to get it. Honestly, once you start doing a little bit of research into Teslas, you realize that the just the network that Elon Musk has built and Tesla has built really makes you feel incredibly comfortable as soon as you make that decision. Forget about once you get it. I mean, these charging stations are everywhere. You feel very comfortable. I mean, you're, you're prepared for any scenario. Yeah. Um, now, you, you didn't race a Porsche 911 Turbo. Didn't race it. But be, have, you ever, have you ever had a supercar before this? Have you ever driven a supercar? So this is, this is, uh, wow. So a couple firsts for you. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'll drive in the car. I'm like, wow, this is the fastest production car in the world. I was like, it's weird. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, and I think I, I did see one pop up there before, but I, our, our call president asked, have you not raced anyone besides not racing the, uh, the 911? Just, no, just that one. I, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't a real race. We were on New Jersey turn. Right. right just a, a quick, um, a little tap. <laughs> A little, I mean, that's the thing though, once one of you guys get behind the wheel of this thing, you realize that tap is dangerous. It is, I mean, it's really, really quick. It's really fast. Um, it's incredible. So you, I mean, you have, I really, both the uh, nine o'clock and three o'clock, like you feel it. Um, and there's a bunch of settings in here. I mean, I'm sure you guys will see, you know, how you switch between drag strip mode and plaid mode and sport mode and comfort mode. I mean, you can change not only the transmission and the way that how quickly the car runs, but you can change how heavy the steering wheel is um, based on how fast you're going. I mean, you can change the suspension as an air suspension. It has multiple levels that you can raise and lower, which is really, really great because the car does run a little low, right? So if you are parking and you do feel like that cement block is a little bit higher than normal, you can raise the suspension up before you go into it, which is a really nice feature. Awesome. Uh, now, do you have any trips planned with the Model S going on your, your first EV road trip or anything like that? No, not yet. Okay. I mean, you'll die. I've driven this car two days. <laughs> <laughs> so going going from uh, what you said, you went to Jersey with it? Yeah, I went to drive an office in New Jersey, so okay. to work and back. So potentially your, your first road trip might be up to the, the drag strip in the capital region. <laughs> uh, you know what? We'll see you Listen, in August. <laughs> if you'll have us, I'll, I'm coming. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and I think my, my last question for you before we get to the, the Q&A, which is, uh, what have you found to be one of the quirkiest aspects of the car so far? 
Does, does, quirky doesn't have to mean bad, just quirky in general. Quirky. Um, I did read somewhere, and I haven't tried it yet, but something like if you make like some fart noises or something, the uh, the charge port opens up. <laughs> something like that. Or if you say like I have to go for something, or I have to go to the bathroom, the charge <laughs> port opens. It's like pretty funny. Um, that that would, I would say that falls under quirky, but kind of other unique things. It, honestly, the roof is actually really cool because it is a full glass roof, right? But it is tinted and you don't feel like the heat of the sun on you. Like today, riding around at like 3, 4 p.m. in New Jersey Turnpike, you'd be getting crushed with the sun, with the, with the glass roof and uh, you don't feel that at all. Awesome. Um, all right, so we'll, we'll go ahead and get into our Q&A. As a reminder, uh, just you could use the hand raise icon. It just allows everything to be a little bit more orderly, um, just so no one's over speaking over anyone. Um, I'll call on you, just unmute your microphone. Um, if you don't want to speak out loud, no problem. Just use the chat box and preface it with a Q. Just lets me uh, read them a little bit quicker. And I could start to read some from, uh, from the list right now. And like I said, just, oh, actually, uh, Steven, go ahead. Oh, you're, uh, you're currently on mute. Okay. Why is it called a plaid? Does anybody know it's called a plaid? Because a plaid is sort of run of the mill, not very exciting. <laughs> you would think with this car, which I mean, Omar just showed the excitement that you have. Why did they call it plaid? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that is a very good question. One of which I have no idea. Oh, all right. Uh, Steven, I'll, I'll answer that for you. So uh, Elon is a, uh, a nerd in the best way possible, right? Um, one of his favorite movies is Spaceballs. And in the, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Spaceballs, but there's a scene where uh, they're going from, uh, I forgot the first one. It might be light speed, then from light speed to ludicrous speed, and then from ludicrous speed to plaid. So ludicrous, which is, you know, from the, the P100D, or I think even the the, uh, the performance model, as it was, they had ludicrous mode. Um, and then the only thing beyond ludicrous was plaid. So that is why they, they went with the name plaid. Okay, thank you. That's You're right. <laughs> Uh, we have a question from Jeffrey. Have you uh, have you got on it yet? I'm guessing he means as, as far as acceleration. Have you got on it? Uh, and he's also from East Islip. Yeah, I mean, I, I topped over 100, but um, but and it's quick. On the direction. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, it was. It's it's a fact. I mean, like I said, but it's it's so weird to not hear anything. Like you don't hear the cars next to you. You just feel like you're floating. I mean, it's incredible. Um, and then I, I guess uh, on top of your, your your response, which is typically in, in a car, you know, even even I have a, a dual motor Model 3 and from 20, you punch it at 20 and it gets to 60, but you punch it at 60 and there's still a pull, but on yours, if you're punching it at 60, does it feel almost the same way as if you hit it at like 20? Wow. That's exactly right. So I think um, the, way, the way that it's been built is that it's a little bit over a thousand horsepower the entire way through. If you, they're going to have apparently... Um, some special tire package to get up to 200 miles an hour. But right now you can get up to about 150 and it's from zero to 150. It's a thousand horsepower the whole way. Whereas some of the other Teslas or all the other Teslas, as you get higher up in the, um, in the miles per hour, it does diminish your kind of pull. So that, that's, that's a great feature of the car. I mean, you're, you're feeling the same thousand horsepower the whole way through. And then this is this is the tri motor, right? Plaid is a tri motor, so you have two motors in the back and then one in the front. Um, and a question yeah. from Anthony, which is, where do you have your your Easy Pass? Oh, yeah, just, I need to put it in the car. Okay. So today, like I said, was my second day, and I was like, shit, I forgot my Easy Pass. So I was like, and I was thinking to myself as I went through the Easy Pass, even though I didn't have one, because I was like, forget it, I'm not waiting. Um, I have no idea where I'm going to put it. Mm, yeah, maybe I'll get the license plate cover. I don't really want to put it on the windshield. So, or maybe I'll keep it in the classic glove box or this little um, station right here and pull it out each time. So just chime in a little bit, uh, because of the windshield is uh, um, uh, laminated. Yeah. So if you put the easy pass behind the windshield, they might not pick it up. So for my car, uh, you get the uh, plate, uh, you know, um, uh, version and mount it in the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's make sure that you get picked up when you drive by. There. So I that's what I find out. So uh, in the past, when I had it inside, not every time picked up. So I change it to the outside. And other way to do that is you can put it in the front. 
So when you open to the front, there is a little bit of a, a cover in the, in the toward the front. You pop that out, and then you mount it inside there. Okay, uh, so you will not be visible, uh, but the signal can be detected by the sensors uh, as you drive through uh, the, uh, the 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 ramp over there. So that th those are a couple of ways to uh, to do easy pass for Model S. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Patrick. So, Omar, do you have the uh, the key card on you by any chance? Yeah. Okay. It's, it, it's a little kind of flimsy, surprisingly. I'm going to assume it's probably the same as uh, the 3 and the Y. Same kind of hotel uh, black card. Uh, yeah, it is, but it's, I mean, it's like worse than a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this thing. It's like already, like I put it in my wallet, it's like already. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> That shouldn't be like that. I, I, I'm, wow. Did you leave it out in the yeah. sun today? What, what happened? <laughs> no, I'll be honest with you. They came out of the little package like this. Really? Okay. Yeah. I, that, that shouldn't be like that. I've, I've had mine for two years. This thing is like, this thing is like, I don't know. That is odd. Yeah. I've, I've had mine for two years. The only thing that's ever happened is the, the little silver letters came out and that's just because I, I use a, a phone wallet case. So they just kind of get beat up going in and out of there, but that's, that's surprising that, yeah, very odd. Yeah, no, the mine, mine definitely came out of the packet like that. I mean, because it's only been two days, three days. Um, and then Jeffrey wants to know, can you show it opening up the uh, the Model S, I guess? I'm going to assume it's probably the same way as the 3 and the Y, which is how to unlock it. Opening up the... I, I, I believe uh, Jeffrey's talking about un unlocking it. Uh, yes. As far as how you unlock unlocking. it. Or... Oh, oh, the door? Yeah. yeah if it opens up yeah. the same Y... No, it has it has no, with the card. I think the other ones have a handful. Oh, with the card. Uh, I don't wait, know how it opens wait, with the yeah, card because maybe. mine is connected to the phone. Wow, oh, yes. Okay, never mind there. Right so yeah, typically you just take the card and put it right below the camera, and then that's where it would uh, lock or unlock it from. Oh, yeah. You know what my issue is? Is that since it's connected to my phone, it will unlock as yeah, I come don't... close with my phone. Okay, so, so, so I'd pretty have much to, the I'd same way as a three. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, John brought up something really cool. I guess we'll have to we'll have to try a little science experiment here. Can you try putting your I guess your 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 palm over where all the buttons are? And he's saying that I guess it's it's potentially rumored that maybe that that puts off the the horn. Wait, put my palm over what? If you put your palm over all of the the buttons on on the right side of the wheel, if that makes your the horn go off. Hmm. Yeah. Sounds like it did. Uh, but it, it wow. pushes everything. Oh, but it does everything. Okay. I mean, <laughs> because, so like I said, these buttons, they're not actually buttons. It's all, a, yeah, it's, it's all a flat screen. So like, if you just hover over it, it's gonna, it pushes by mistake very easily. Like there's no physical button here. Right. It's just right. like, uh, it's all flat. Gotcha. Okay. So it, it might just work where it, it accidentally touches the horn, but it doesn't. Okay. Actually, yeah. Interesting. Um, let's see. Are the, oh, I think we answered this before. The rear seats are not ventilated, you said, right? They're only heated. Okay. Oh, and this, I, mean, I think this is in the three and the Y, but the dual charging is in the front and in the back. And then I believe you could change the, uh, the, the drive mode down there too, right? It lights up PR and D. Yeah. I mean, if you see the okay. P. Oh. Yep. Yep. Oh, and then I do have it on the auto choose, you know, which direction you're going to go in. Um, it's, it, it's intuitive, right? Because it's simple. If, if something's in front of you, it pushes you in reverse. The downside is once you reverse and then you want to go forward, it doesn't automatically do that. You do have to flip the switch or, uh, you know, move the, the bar up. So right now you're in your driveway. If you wanted to go forward, is it kind of a luck of the draw because you're on a long strip? I, I'm assuming it's going to choose forward, but... You know, I can try. It does make you put your seatbelt on before it does anything. Right. Automated. Right. Here, it'll say tap to drive, and then it'll it'll go forward. Oh, so it's telling and, you forward. Okay. Yeah, and if it if it wants to go back, it'll actually say tap to reverse. Hmm. The good thing is is that it's it's very deliberate, right? Like you're not going to get confused in any way. Like you're going forward. It's not going to surprise you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this arrow is massive. <laughs> And then this is where, if you want to change, this is where you swipe. 
Oh, and this, I mean, the screen is like incredible. Yeah, they, they did a heck of a job with that. Uh, now, do you know, do the rear seats recline at all or are they fixed? No, I believe they're fixed. Okay. Um, and then the range is what, 390 at a full charge? Well, I know, so I have the 21 inch wheels. So okay. my understanding is that I'm 350. Um, and the 19 inch wheels is 390 to 400. I'm wondering if you get any more grip. I mean, you would, you would think, of, are, are they wider uh, wheels as well, or just... Uh, just uh, I, I think diameter? they're the same. I'm pretty sure they're the same width, but okay. um, but they are incredibly wide wheels. I mean, the wheels are massive. Yeah, I remember, I remember the first time I saw a Corvette, I saw it from the back, and I was like, holy cow. If you ever see, next, next time you see a Corvette, just look at the rear wheels, and they, they are massively wide. Yeah, um, my, my buddy drives an M5, and these, these are very similar wheels to what he has. They're really wide. Yeah. Um, Howard asks, we're having an event in the in the Capital Region. Um, I believe it's July 20, is it 24th? I believe it's July 17th, 17th. Wants to know if you'd be interested in making it up here for that at the Saratoga Auto Museum. July 17th, uh, let's see, that is a Saturday. I'm gonna try, I'll try. Okay, awesome. Yeah, it would be the, probably the first plaid up up here. Um, it'll, be, it'll be a nice, it'll be a nice commute. Yeah. Oh, and beautiful it's a beautiful July place day. up here. Beautiful place. Uh, oh, Stephen, you have another question? Yeah, Omar. The thing that you were really impressed was the, the the universal interface. How quickly it responded to your fingers. Yes. I have a Model Three, and that's one of the annoying things. It is slow to respond to a thing. You think Tesla would incorporate some of that into the Model Threes? It doesn't sound like it. It sounds like this this specific UI that they built for the Model S Plaid is only meant for the Model S Plaid, as far as my understanding. Um, but uh, but yeah, like I said, out of everything, the the receptiveness of the screen is my favorite. Yeah, the the, the chip in there they're comparing to the same performance of a, a PS Five or Xbox uh, Xbox Series X or like it, it's it is it is up there. It, you could literally play uh, what was it, what was it that they were playing that night? Uh, Cyberpunk. Like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, uh, it's faster than my computer. My computer <laughs> lags slower than this. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate uh, I really appreciate the response. Have you, uh, have you used uh, supercharging yet? Have you noticed the speeds? Is it a little over a thousand miles? Is, is it around there at, a, at, a, at version three? Yeah, so since it's my first Tesla, I supercharged this morning, even though I was at like 40 or 50%, because I was like, okay, how do I charge this thing? Um, so I went to a supercharger in Jersey and it was quick. I charged about 60% of it in about 25 minutes. Huh. Uh, and then here's here's another. This is a, I guess a, a big controversy around the, the new the new design, the the yoke and three point turns. How how has that been? If you had to make any yet? Yeah, it's it's tough. Um, in tough in that is definitely manageable. And I like I said, I love the yoke. I'm, I think I'm a full yoke person because it just makes the entire like driving experience I feel like better from a visualization perspective. Um, it does take a little while to get used to, but it, once you kind of get a better feel of where to grip the wheel when you're turning, you'll be fine. But, you know, obviously, if you have more area to pull, it's better for you. But from a regular driving perspective, I like the yoke better. Gotcha. Have, you, have um, you tried to put your hand on the top of it and just hit the wheel instead? <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll tell you one other thing that you cannot do at all with the steering wheel. You cannot drive with your knee at all. <laughs> Zero. Because it is completely flat on the bottom. So, and I'm someone that I could make a turn with my knee if I needed to, but the, um, the flatness of the bottom, you can, you could barely go straight. Well, thankfully you have full self-driving. Now, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, now as, as I put my knee on there, I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> hey, wait, wait a second, hold on. <laughs> um, I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat after that. Like I said, if, if you're, you're more than welcome to, to chime in, if you have any questions, just use the other hand, raise hand icon. If you can't find it, just feel free to, yeah, Jeffrey, go ahead. <laughs> Is the uh, glass roof, is that also double pane? That's a good question. I don't know, but I would assume that it is. I have the Y and in the 90 plus degree temperature, you feel the heat up high. Um, so by what you were describing, I'm thinking that's a superior roof. 
Yeah, I mean, I definitely driving today in a hundred plus degree weather on the New Jersey Turnpike and sitting in traffic in LIE, um, mm-hmm. I did not feel any heat coming from anywhere in the car. Okay, cool. Patrick? Hey, Omar, did you buy full self driving package with or with your car? Yes, I did. Uh, have you uh, tried to use it? And how, yes. how, how is it? How is it? Is it uh, quite responsive or uh, it's try navigation uh, pilot? It's it's exciting and scary at the same time. So because I used it for the first time today, because you have to hit, I think, roughly 60 miles before it engages because it has to calibrate the car. So right. I hit it today on my drive in the morning. Um, and and it, I'll say the most interesting part is when it takes it changes lanes for you. I'm like, oh, man, it says, all right, because you have to hit the blinker in order to confirm that it needs to change lanes. And when it changes lanes, I'm like, wow, this thing is really moving. And then it'll make turns. I mean, I felt, I felt very comfortable in the car. Um, and I felt very comfortable with the full self-driving. But there were some instances, you know, where some cars will stop to make a turn and it does stop a little bit abruptly obviously this is the tesla it doesn't have any radar so i don't know what radar cars are like um in regards to that phantom braking that they talk about but i definitely felt it was a little bit overly cautious which I, I think, i'm, I'm uh, okay with omar i think actually the, the model s and x as far as i know from from the from what i saw those still have uh, radar on them um, I think the new ones don't, but I'm not the sure. New ones, maybe? okay. From yeah, from from the last thing yeah, I saw. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. So Omar, it's it's natural yeah. for you to respond, uh, being new to um, uh, you know, FSD, because it, it takes time to build the trust uh, between right. you and the car to know that uh, it's gonna do the right thing at the right time. It might not be your timing, but you know, I mean, that's that's where um, you know, you gotta have to acclimate with with that. Um, yeah. But, um, I've but I've uh, I've been married to my wife for seven years. She still doesn't trust me. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Thank you. So, no, um, and you mentioned you have kids. Have they gone out for a drive with you? No, not yet. Uh, they they saw the car when I first got it, but it was too late in the day. And you know, we'll move. We'll put the car seats in at some point. Uh, have you taken your wife out to the in this car yet? Yes. Uh, she was it, and she actually so, so she she was very hesitant in getting it. Um, but once she saw it in person, she was stunned as to how good it looked. I mean, she she was like I said hesitant at first, but now she is a hundred percent on board. Has she taste the, the sense of acceleration in you? <laughs> yes, a little bit. <laughs> how does she feel? <laughs> she was she, she wasn't that happy with me. <laughs> I, I, my my wife hated it too, so we are the same folks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if if there's any more questions, feel free to like I said, type them in or just uh, just chime in. I think Jeff, I think I saw you, you had a question. Oh, I was just going to comment on the full self drive. I have the Y, which with radar, and the the two negatives I find from it, it doesn't anticipate as quickly as I can because it's not looking as far ahead mm. so it, it breaks a little more abruptly than I, I I like and I have seen the phantom breaking a few times it, it's something to get used to I mean it's still amazing um, oh, but yeah. I don't I, it doesn't seem like the s the new plaid has um, anything different than that than than my y in that regard no so- I, I I think the breaking is a little heavy but you know I think that's just a cautionary type of thing Mm-hmm. So, so I find out one thing is that um, on my Model S, I think you have it in Model 3 as well. You can adjust the, the, uh, the distance between vehicles when you're in the uh, pilot. So if you want it to, not to break so abruptly, you set, the, you set the distance to the fathers. So basically, if, you, like, if you're going to be setting at the distance of one car length, it reacts much later. Where if you set up a seven card length, it'll react much sooner. So uh, that's one way. If you don't like the abrupt, adjust the, the distance setting to the farthest, and it will start breaking much earlier. So that's uh, that is that's what I do with my um, uh, to avoid that issue. Well, it doesn't really avoid it because when you're driving, let's say you're doing 75 on a on a highway, 
and you look up ahead a mile away and you see all the red brake lights, when you're driving, you just start to back off a little bit. And my Model Y would, in full self-drive keeps going pretty quickly um, and then has to brake with using brakes where if I'm driving, I don't have to. I'm sure they'll get that better with, with software enhancements. Right, in the right. Um, I think yeah, there's but, guys, that makes a difference in there, the, the setting too. But anyway, you can try it out. Yeah, Omar, I think yeah. there's one more question in, in the chat, which is uh, where is the speedometer on the car in front of you? I think just there's, there's, um, the, the screen. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's on the, it shows a numerical, hold on, I have my seatbelt on. It shows a numerical um, number as far as how fast you're driving, and it's on the right side. Okay. So they kept it on that center screen and then pushed it towards the, the right? No. Yeah, right there. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. That looks great. Yeah. Oh, see, this windshield wiper, it's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I don't see any more questions in the in the chat. Um, John mentioned it, there, uh, there is a, a podcast about phantom braking and how radar contributes to it. So if, if you wanted to check that out, why possibly why Tesla is moving towards uh, vision only. Uh, that might be interesting. That's in, in the chat box down below. Uh, but Omar, I think that's that's everything. So so we really, really appreciate your time and, and appreciate your openness. Uh, next time I'm down in Long Island, I, I might have to make sure I, I bump into you and <laughs> go for go for a ride. Oh, absolutely. You have my number. Text me anytime. You guys are awesome. always welcome. Perfect. Well, yeah, thank you again. And um, we'll, we'll hope congratulate, to, congratulate. to Yeah, yeah no, and congratulations. Pleasure. It really is a great company, a really great kind of getting everybody together. Great community. Awesome. But yeah, thank you everyone for, for joining. Omar, thank you once again. And we'll, thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll see each other very soon. My pleasure. Bye, guys. Appreciate that, Omar. Bye-bye.